Welcome everybody to our coverage of the 2021 Pro Masters Disc Golf World Championships in Johnson City, Tennessee, powered by Infinite Discs. You are watching FP40 Lead Card Round 5 Mac 9 coverage, brought to you by us here at Beat Up Pro. Today's commentary is brought to you by myself, Cameron McKilling, and my good buddy and co-cameraman, Curtis Moroni. And taking a look at the front scorecard, you can see that Owen Scoggins, Neg 3, Jennifer Allen, 1 under, and Elaine King, even par. And here we are, hole 10, 264-foot par 3. This one is uphill, and you do have this hallway of trees that you are going to be throwing up for the first half of this hole. And then uh, after that, it opens up just a little bit, and you want to get it up there to the basket. This one is definitely scorable, and as long as you can get out of the initial gap, you've got an easy birdie look. Yep, the green is pr pretty fair. You just want to throw some in slow and turning. Get off that tree. Keep turning. Oh, hits it, but she is right out there in the middle and will still be able to definitely take home a par on hole 10. This tee pad is angled just a little bit to the left, which makes the... Oh, great drive. Hard tree there at the end. Makes the gaps seem a little bit smaller. Wow, what an excellent drive from Owen. Right to the same spot as Jennifer, but so much lower that the tree didn't end up destroying her in the same way. Looks like just outside circle. And uh, should be mentioned, you can hear in the background there is a softball game going on just to the uh, left of the fairway over there. Cleaning up the par. And Jen gonna tap in her par as well. And hole 11, 305 foot par 3. This one is also uphill. Uh, the basket is kind of tucked into the trees up here to the right, and it does have. You know, three or four guardian trees right in front of it. So you got to keep something low enough to get up there into the green. And then uh, hopefully you've gotten up far enough where you're not trying to putt around those trees. Or you can throw it high and crash into the trees and hope it just plink goes down to the basket. Um, I don't think we're going to see that play, but I, I suppose you could. Yeah. I don't know if anyone in the Masters Division is going to try something like that. They all seem to want to go with the control shots mm -hmm. as opposed to the luck shots. As, at least that's what I've noticed this week. And we are directly next to the softball fields at this point. You can see them just right. You see the outfield just right there. And that is a good drive. Jen kind of doing it. I don't know if she necessarily meant to be over there all the way, but... She Ooh. definitely wanted to put more turn on it. Elaine hitting the first available on her up shot. Late rock, but... On for two. Beautiful. You can't I miss. I don't think it's fair. She makes everything. Bogey four there for Elaine, and a par for Jennifer Allen. Hole 12, 229 foot, par three. Uh, this is one of the scarier holes on the course, in my opinion. Because not only do you have to get all the way down to the basket, but even if you have a shot that looks like it's getting going to be perfect, you still have the very real possibility of going right over and past the basket yeah. and 90 feet further out into the open yeah. down there by where you see those people walking their dog. Speed control is very important on this green. You can blow by the basket if you go in too hot. I'm going with the forehand. 
getting caught up pretty early. Mm -hmm. Oh, and pretty hard tree kick. She's gonna be over there by own on the right side of the fairway. Oh, Lane doing the same thing. Kicking straight down though, right in the middle. Tough gap off the tee pad on this one. Get around. Two in a row. Shout out the boy Jennifer Addison. Addison. <laughs> Caddying for Jennifer. He's just a local uh, Eastern Tennessee State student that wanted to help out. We'll get there someday. He saw Jen didn't have a caddy, so he asked if he could carry her bag for her. I thought that was kind of cool. It's super awesome. Good upshot from Elaine. That's what you want to do there. Something that'll sit down quick for you. Not bad either. Owen is way down there though. Oh, I thought those softball girls, the cheer was going to pump Owen up to hit that big putt. <laughs> I think it did the opposite of that. I, well, they were counting her down. I thought she was, was going to make it. One, two, three, four. Make. <laughs> Bogey there for Jen. And a bogey for Elaine. This is a hard hole. Yeah, the distance makes it look like it's an easy hole, but there's so many trees in the fairway, and the, the gaps are very tiny. Scar frame there, and we are on to hole three, 270 foot par three. This one is going up the hill. Uh, similar amount of trees the last hole, but a, definitely a more defined lane you're trying to go through. Um, you gotta get up and you gotta hook it hard to the right up here and get over this little hill we're flying over and down onto the green. Um, if you can't push a forehand that far, you want a really late turning backhand. A little too much turn on that out of the hand. You want to make it to the top of that hill over there for for the chance at par, otherwise it's pretty hard to scramble to get up Yeah, there. if you're off the fairway on this hole, that's a good drive from the lane. That's a really good drive yeah, from the lane. Yeah, it's a great drive. Jen putting a move on it. Oh, and that's a really good save there. We missed Owen's upshot here, but that is for three. Nice safe layup. This for a par, huh? Yeah, yeah, after uh, that really nice big backhand turnover shot. It was a great par save. Yeah, par is really good on this hole. Especially if you don't nail the drive. Yeah, you're most likely taking strokes on the field with a par. And uh, Elaine and Jen both going to take a stroke on own here. Um, not that it really makes a difference at 14 strokes ahead, but hole 14. Hey, same number. 246 <laughs> foot par 3. Um, this is another one where you're in the woods and up a hill. Um, yeah, I don't. I mean, I don't really know what else to say about a lot of these other than. Yep, it's a, it's the theme of the courses, elevation and tight wooded gaps. This one also has a slope green, just like every other hole. A couple guardian trees, yep. just like most of the other holes. Just gotta hit the gap with commitment. No. Oh, she committed. <laughs> she did commit. Just off to the right. And Elaine with the opposite, just off to the left. All right, Owen. Now split the difference. Oh, Looks just like she sneaks it. Oh. Coming right at me. <laughs> <laughs> just missed me. And that's why we put you down on that side, Curtis, because I would have been hit for sure. <laughs> That's for Paul, or that's for her birdie, right? Yeah, that's that was her second throw. Good upshot for Jen. There. 
Nice little layup there from Elaine. And a birdie for Own Scoggins. You know, I wish I would have gone up and counted up exactly how many birdies Own had over the course of the tournament. Because it's she, a ton. As of right now, she's 23 under par, but I'm sure the birdie counts close somewhere yeah. in the 30s. Disc golf was a sport that nobody knew about when I first started playing. I had to explain it to my parents, my family. When I first started, I grew up in Ohio playing disc golf and, and just playing locally. It was, you know, not as big of a deal. There was never a gallery. There was never video coverage. I've been touring for the last decade and seeing this early point in development now to this crazy growth. Parents can uh, want their kids to play disc golf because there's a future there, there's money, there's professionalism. I just imagine it just getting bigger and better and I'm excited to be part of it. And we are back from commercial break. Uh, I don't know if you noticed, but I actually am in that commercial, standing behind the basket in the pink shirt when James Conrad throws it in. Little self plug there. Uh, hole 15, 443, I'm sorry, I had to. Hole 15, 443 foot, par three. Uh, par four, excuse me. Um, this one is a pretty tight fairway for how long you have to throw it. Luckily, it's nice and straight for you and downhill. And uh, if you can get a nice turning or, you know, a nice turnover flight down, you yeah. can have a look at an eagle pretty. The grass is pretty thick on the fairway, so you could kind of play lawn darts. Yeah, just a little bit. Oh, a little high. Jennifer mentioned something about two in this hole, and I think she might have been going for it right there. Oh, she was definitely going for it. She, yeah, she does. She had mentioned that she had toed it, I think, three or four times in her practice rounds. She definitely has the power to get it all the way down there. It's a great out. Great second throw from Elaine. Be a long look. Own from a little bit deeper in the woods. Oh, and that's standing up and marching to the basket for her. Oh, great bid from Elaine. Left side. Another fantastic birdie for Owen Scoggins. Great comebacker with for Elaine. And the turbo from Jennifer. Easy par. So frustrating. I tuned this a couple of times in practice. Oh, there it is. Yep. Four times. Hole 16, 577 foot par four. Uh, this one is a lot of uphill. Luckily, it is nice and open for you. Uh, you just have to worry about a couple trees here and there kind of blocking your way. It tightens up just a little bit, about 150 feet away from the basket, and then opens up again for you. Um, luckily, the grass is pretty long, so you're not as likely to stand up and roll away as some other holes, but... Still a possibility. Still a possibility. I think she's trying to match the hillside. Yep, she's just trying to get as far up the hill on the first drive as possible and stay in the middle so that you can get through that second gap, or that, I guess, that main gap up there. It's really easy to stall out and phase up, or fade out into the woods to the left when you're throwing the backhand. Mm -hmm. Luckily, Jen gets enough turn on it where it fades out to the middle of the fairway there for her. No, this one has the chance of going out in the woods. And it, and it does. does. And Elaine, Fortune just to pitch, pitch out. out. And she clears the next gap. And oh, that's got to keep turning. Or it's going to be in jail over there just a little bit. Good out from Owen. That was a great out. Nice. 
and throwing it up there so she has a downhill look at the basket just a little bit a little bit of a test but catches it easy par I think this is the tr one, the most true par four on the course. It takes two good shots to get up there. For it does. It does take two good shots to get up there. Hole 17, the second to last hole we're going to see here at Wing Deer for the tournament. 286 foot par three. This one is downhill and to the left. And uh, the if you can forehand it down there, it's a great play. But the play you see more often is a nice turnover backhand that's going to break late and then just take you all the way down and kind of fade out to flat and land you right down there by the basket. On going with that flexi forehand and it's almost pinned deep but pretty far to the left of the basket there. Here's the turnover play. Or that hit something early, huh? Mm-hmm. And she's going to be off to the right side of the fairway, just barely in the bushes there. Lena has executed this hole great, and it looks like she did again. And that is so good. All the way down there. Even giving a little bit of an ace run. Yeah, she skips it off of the you know depression that the yeah. pin is dug down into. Maybe giving that a long run for par, huh? Mm, that was a good bid. Oh, an almost uncharacteristic, uncharacteristic miss for Owen there. Great birdie from Erlane King on hole 17. Tough four for Jen. Last hole here at Wing Deer, 364 foot, par three. Make this first gap here and start making your way to the right. Uh, if you can get down there to where it's flat over there, you will have a look at a birdie. Um, if not, don't want to be throwing it out into the road on your upshot or into those woods at any point because you will be picking up an easy extra stroke if you get stuck in jail over there. Mm -hmm. You just don't want to f turn your drive over too early or you'll get stuck in those right, the, the forest on the right, or you don't want to go too straight into the, the woods. This fades out. That's looking great. Yep, and that's going to be circle two look for Owen Scoggins on the last hole here of the semifinals. It's got a turn. It's also a great shot. Great placement there for Mullane. Not looking to lose a stroke here. Oh, Jennifer giving it a run. Give me one. Oh. So close. A little left. And these ladies are going to clean up their pars here. And they will have about a four hour break until they are supposed to be teeing off for the final nine. Um, spoiler alert, there is going to be a thunderstorm between now and then, and it's yeah. gonna push their tee time back quite a bit. Uh, taking a look at the scorecard, you can see Owen with a stellar neg five. Jennifer and Elaine struggled to score in this round, sort of stay below par. But uh, Melody Bailey is going to be the only lady joining them on the lead card for the final nine. And uh, we'll be seeing them after the weather clears out. Make sure to follow us at PDGA on Facebook, Twitter, and Instagram. And also head to PDGA.com and join if you are not already a member.